Well, howdy y'all. This is Mike with Fly All Season. And as some of you may know, I am not a pro fly tire and I am not a guide. <laughs> I'm just some guy. But when you fly all season, you gotta tie all season as well. Every week brings a new adventure and every adventure brings a new challenge. And to chase that bite, we gotta have the right flies in our box. So let's take it right now to the vise and see what's cooking up for this week's adventure. I think it's really easy for us fly anglers to get distracted by the idea of prolific hatches and the thought of throwing pontoon sized dry flies to overzealous trout. And don't get me wrong, I like doing that just as much as the next guy, but it's not always practical. And I think that's, that's the one theme I wanna look at in today's video. If you take away one thing, it would be to look at the opposite side of a hatch chart. What I mean by this is, you look at a hatch chart for you know whatever your favorite river is and you see, oh cool, the caddis hatched between September and October. Well, think to yourself, okay, if I can't make it to this river between those two months, what are these fish eating the other 10 months out of the year? And I think it's so very important to have a wide range of both nymph and emerging phases of these bugs in various sizes, colors, patterns, the, just cover this spread of you know those 10 months, let's just say. And to really hit this example home, I'd like to introduce you to the little black GMO stone. And for some of you out there, this fly may look familiar. This, this sweet treat, <laughs> it tricked one of our two monster GMO bows when we were down in the Gunnison playing <laughs> in the gorge. And this, represents a juvenile stonefly. Uh, uh, not even, I wouldn't even say close to adult. It's a lot smaller, kind of a general pattern. It's very subtle. And you think about a place like the Gunnison. From late spring to early summer, it is known for its prolific salmon fly hatch. I mean, people come from all around the world to fish this river for, you know, <laughs> this reason alone, to throw bird-sized dry flies at just trophy level trout. And this is all well and good, and this is really cool if you can make it down there, but this isn't always feasible. Like we went in September, so those flies aren't hatching. But it's important to note that I had a wide range of salmon fly and stone fly patterns in various sizes and colors. And I think that's why we need to uh, we need to stop, break down the exact recipe for this little fly. And as you can see, <laughs> this fly is no longer serviceable, so we need to replace it. But before we do, got to give it the proper burial, the burial it deserves in the Valhalla, the uh, the fly box of champions. And before we actually jump into the the exact recipe, um, I say exact. I'm gonna contradict myself. I look at fly tying more like cooking rather than baking, if you catch my analogy. So when you're looking at cooking, you may add a pinch of salt here, maybe some pepper there, or yeah, throw in some onions or throw in some garlic, whatever it might be. There's no exacts. It's all about feel, it's all about timing, it's all about what you want. So a lot of the flies that I tie are gonna have slight variations from the various versions that I make. So there's, there's not gonna be a, uh, yeah, a standard pattern. I'm not baking, I'm not using exacts, exact times, exact measurements, no, screw that. Every fly I make is pretty much a one of one yeah, with some slight deviation. So with that being said, <laughs> let's get into the recipe for this little black GMO stone. Our cooking analogy could not be more fitting because as I was sitting down, getting ready to tie this fly, I thought to myself, hmm, maybe some rubber antenna would give a little pizzazz. It'd be a little little nice uh, accent to this fly. And as I was trying to be cute with it, I just didn't really like the way this ended up looking. So if I were you, I would totally leave out this step. Don't tie in the antenna. It doesn't need it. The original fly didn't have them either. so. Oh, I digress. We're going to whip finish this just to yeah get it out of the way so that we can slide this bead over and work on the rest of this fly. And the next step, much like this antenna section, is completely optional. I've said it before and I'll say it again. 
I don't like using split shot. So if I'm tying flies, I wanna tie all my weight into the flies. So the next step is adding, I would say, <laughs> a lot of lead wire. I want this thing to be heavy. I want this thing to sink. I don't wanna to have to use, yeah, split shot when I'm trying to get deep. I want my flies to do the job for me. So again, completely leave this out if you aren't a big fan of, of tying with lead. I like it and I think it works really, really well. But now we're gonna move into the tail section. And for this tail section, I did opt to change out that goose by it for rubber legs. I think that a more durable tail section would do you do you a lot better than those goose bite because if you get hit <laughs> a couple of times with those goose bite, they will start to either fray or just break off completely. These rubber legs, they're gonna last you more than a few trips. So I think this is a good addition to the fly. And now that the tail is done, we have to start thinking about the body. And I need you to put on your supply chain hats, get those logistics majors out because we need to think about order of operations. The way this body section is gonna go is we're gonna need to tie in some wire. And this wire is gonna essentially be the glue that holds this entire body section together. So get that locked in place, nice and tight towards the base of your tail. And then we actually have to think about the body section itself. And for that, we're gonna be using Crystal Flash. And Crystal Flash, you know, it has a tendency to break, it has a tendency to fray. And that's, again, why we're gonna be using this metal wire to rewrap over it. But for the body, I'm using a black, I think it's a technically an ostrich, like chenille color, but it has this beautiful shimmer of black and emerald. It, it just is a subtle but flashy way to build up a body section. So once that's locked in, we're gonna wrap our wire back around that crystal flash section, essentially locking all those fibers in and creating a, yeah, a really strong body. And this next step, it can probably be the most complicated part of this fly. So if you're not good with a dubbing loop, don't even sweat it, just get a nice dubbing noodle together and yeah, wrap up a nice thorax. But for me personally, I like making a collar. And to do this, I cut zonker strip sections, I just cut the hair straight off, and I feed that into my dubbing loop. And this may seem tedious, but I promise you, once you spin that sucker up, it creates this beautiful buggy collar that has fibers just splayed out everywhere. And once you get it in the water, it looks so good. So try your best to coax those fibers back as you start laying down this collar and just be slow with it. Don't rush it, take your time. And eventually you'll have a beautiful, just, I mean, super buggy collar. So all that's left to do is wrap that in place, get that all locked in, cut off your dubbing noodle, and then yeah, a couple whip finishes and you are right there, folks. You have a very buggy stone fly that can represent a wide range of, yeah, both species and stages of the stone fly life cycle. And I know I sure like this fly and I think I, I think I need to have more than a few of these in my box at all times, especially after our Gunnison trip. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it. I know it's a little unconventional to uh, not give exacts on a fly recipe, but it's a create your own adventure kind of thing. And I think that it's uh, important as people experiment and try new flies to, yeah, just get the general idea of a pattern rather than the exacts. So go tie some of these up and I'll see you in the next video. Well, 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 if you're seeing this, that means you've made it to the end of the video. Like always, I just gotta say thank you so much for enjoying these, and thank you so much for being a part of, yeah, the Fly All Season community. This channel is growing super quick, and it's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm really stoked on it. But if you, too, are stoked on Fly All Season, I got, I got some good news for you. Two quick things, as always, the Instagram and the Discord, you know what's happening over there. Fishy pics, fishy convos, I mean, come on. Get on the Discord while you still can. I mean, the guys and gals over there are super awesome and are always talking shop. One other quick thing, well, maybe two. Gotta give a couple quick shout outs. One being Ant, you know me, I'm rocking. I'm rocking the Ants as always. And whew, fresh new gear from the Dry Fly Society coming in clutch. So go check them out and 
Folks, wherever you find yourself, be it in the Rio Grande Gorge or in your living room, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. Well, not in your living room. <laughs> and until next time, tight lines.